I've had various artists, friends, and some musicians and whatnot come out and help apply paint to my tires or help throw some paint down on the canvas and I'll roll through it. And just so they had to get the, you know, to, to participate in the project. You know, they keep talking about the project and seeing the project online and whatnot. And say, you know, so they've all gotten, you know, one of my friends, Risk, who's a very well-known graffiti artist. He was the first artist to come through. Um, I've had uh, Ringo. Ringo happens to be a good friend. So he came through one day and we created a piece, a circular piece with about four different colors. So it's been a lot of fun. And when you nonchalantly mention Ringo, you're talking about Ringo Starr from the Beatles, right? Just to be clear. Yes, it is Ringo Starr. Phenomenal. Where do you see the Bitcoin price going? Um, let's say by the time of the next halving, I think it's in 2024. Right now we're in 2022. So over the course of the next two to three years, where can you see the Bitcoin price peaking? Like what's, where can you see that baby going? Um, I'd say it can potentially reach half of the value of gold. So roughly around 150,000 per Bitcoin. I, I can definitely see that happening in the next three years. So do you think that the Bitcoin market cap will eventually flip gold as well uh, over the course of the next cycle? Or do you think that could take a lot longer? I think that that'll take the next decade, but I have like unequivocally in my mind believe that it'll surpass the value of gold. Yeah, 100% because gold, I mean, the only one so bullish on it still is Peter Schiff, right? <laughs> yeah, Maybe right. President Putin uh, and some of the people that control most of the gold supply. What's good, crypto fam? JV back with another very special episode of Crypto News Alerts interview style. I have a couple of very special guests with us here in the house, including famous artist Tommy Hollenstein, along with his partner, Abraham. We're going to be discussing some art as well as NFTs in this very fascinating project that they're working on. Now, obviously, my audience doesn't know either of you yet. So why don't you introduce yourself and what your background is? Well, I'm Tommy Hollenstein. I'm an artist. I've been creating art for the last 20 years. 20 plus years. Um, it's kind of a unique style that I have. I've, I was in a bicycle accident in 1985, so I became a quadriplegic that way. And there's a lot of great mouse stick artists out there, but it just wasn't fluid for me when they were trying to teach me that method. So for quite a few years, I didn't do really too much artistically. But 20, 20 some plus years ago, I started creating art with the tires in my wheelchair. And I got real blessed. You know, I did my first solo show in about uh, 2005. Had a very successful show, sold over uh, 19 paintings. A couple of famous people showed up there, Joaquin Phoenix being one of them. And he ended up walking out with two paintings. And it was right at the time that movie Walk the Line came out. So it was perfect time for he and I both. So it just really helped me get a good start. And what inspired you to do art in, in the first place? What created that whole idea to do that and to do it so different? You said using the tires on like your uh, wheelchair. I mean, I've been I'm creatively with my hands since I was five years old. I mean, I started painting and drawing. And, sculptures and just wood carving, all types of stuff. And I'd always done something with like that. So when I got paralyzed and lost the use of my hands, I thought it's over. You know, I thought, you know, the creativity was gone. I didn't realize all the creativity really came from the heart and the soul. And so, you know, I used to kind of play around in puddles of water with the tires. So that's kind of how I got a little bit of an idea. And then I did a painting one day with the tires of my, my chair and my dog. We both walked through a big puddle of roll through and he walked through a puddle of paint creating something so I'd have a great memory, he and I, of all the great times he and I had together. Wow, inspiring. And how about yourself, Abraham? Uh, when did you get into art? Yeah, um, not an artist per se. I, like, I really like design, um, um, but I've been in the crypto space for nine years. Uh, my company, we, we primarily focus on angel and seed investing. Um, and some of the services we do provide are design-based and art-based. Uh, so... Yeah, I understand the space well. Absolutely love Tommy. Met Tommy in September. And um, yeah, we, we thought of this project together and it's been quite a journey. We've been working on it for almost four months now. Nice. Yeah. So why don't you share a little bit more about this project? I know what's very unique about it. It's a physical art piece and it's huge. A 20 by 400 feet. I don't think I've ever, ever seen anything like that. So why don't you kind of dive deeper into what birth uh, the idea in the first place and how this whole thing works. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Tommy and I had a call in September and it was the first time we had spoken and I absolutely loved his story. Um, he has a small little documentary. Um, we're actually filming another documentary as well. So I'm excited for people to see that. But 
um, you kind of see his story and you, you learn about him and you realize how motivating he is. You know, Tommy, one of the beauty in um, just one of the characteristics and um, amazing attributes that Tommy has is he celebrates the day of his um, of his accident, which is quite wild. And then when you get to know him, you get to meet him and you get to hang out with him, you see how motivating and inspiring he is. Everyone that meets him and a lot of the friends that we've met the last four months uh, is, is loved him because he's so inspiring. So when we when I got to understand that, I really wanted to work on this project with him. Uh, the idea of, of what it is now is was really Tommy. So let Tommy come up with that or explain that. Well, I've known about NFTs for quite a while now, and, and I know a lot of the products are 10,000 pieces. So the thought of 10,000 paintings was kind of out of reach, how I was thinking. But also when Abraham approached me and said, well, can you do 10,000? And then I just started, my mind started going. And I had created a mural about five years ago for a painting. And it was, uh, it was we had, it, I had cut it into nine, uh, 90 pieces. And so I'm thinking, okay, if I can get a 24 inch by 48 inch board, we laid out a thousand of them. I've got to do a you know, 100 foot by 100 foot square. I'm thinking I can come up with 10,000. And so that was somewhat feasible, doable, until I started looking for spaces that could hold a 100 foot by 100 foot, which was almost next to impossible. But we did get offered a space that was 20 feet by 40 feet, a little bigger than that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm creating 100 boards at a time, but I take that very last row and I move to the front. Each time I add another 100 boards and I add another color. So I started with four colors on the first 100 boards, which would be a thousand NFTs and then add another color. So today will be the fun. We're finalizing the last 100 boards. I'm, we'll finalize about 13 colors today. So it goes from four colors to 13 colors. So it'll be a, you know, a lot of negative white space to barely any at all. So it'll be a, quite, a, quite a transition, but it all, it all, it is all connected hundred percent. And how long does that take to create an artwork that large uh, 20, 20 by 400? How much time is put into that? We've been working on it. It's five and a half weeks, I think it is. Yeah. Of five good. and a half weeks, five yep. days, four days a week, sometimes five, sometimes four hour days, sometimes eight, 10 hour days. Wow. And is this all done by you? Or is there a team of people working on it? The artwork itself? So the artwork itself is Tommy. And yeah, then 100%. there's contributors, uh, which we'll touch base on in a little bit. But the we there's a team of 40 plus people that have put this together. Um, it's a whole thing. I mean, there's these boards, um, there's, you know, over a thousand boards, you know, this is wooden boards, then they have to be painted, then they have to be placed, they have to be numbered, um, they have to be moved. There's a whole process. Then we also have our video production team that's recording the documentary. They're here three times a week. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot. Then there's the whole digital aspect, you know, the website, the design, the NFTs, um, community management, marketing, you know, there's a lot happening. Um, so yeah, the team in total is 40. The artist is Tommy. And then there are some contributors, which I'll let you touch on. Yeah. Yeah. I've had various artists, friends and some musicians and whatnot come out and help apply paint to my tires or help throw some paint down on the canvas and I'll roll through it. And just so they had to get the, you know, to, to participate in the project, you know, they keep talking about the project and seeing the project online and whatnot and say, you know, so they've all gotten, you know, one of my friends, Risk, who's a very well-known graffiti artist. He was the first artist to come through. Um, I've had uh, Ringo, Ringo happens to be a good friend. So he came through one day and we created a piece, a circular piece with about four different colors. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been- a, And when you nonchalantly mention Ringo, you're talking about Ringo Starr from the Beatles, right? Just to be clear. Yes, it is Ringo's phenomenal. What other uh, major influencers are part of this that uh, some of my audience might know? Well, some of the other people that have, who's come out here. So there's uh, members of Incubus, members of the Pixies, yeah. members of uh, Everclear, um, some and then the, Foster you know, the people, right? Foster Under the people. Mark, Mark Foster came out. Um, Chris James Bauer, Franco. James Franco, yeah. yeah. A couple of actors as well. That's phenomenal. How do you go about getting this much support? Obviously, there is a bigger reason behind it just being an NFT. Do you mind touching upon that? Well, a couple of things. We are raising money for the Dream Center, yep. which I've been you know, a member of and participated for the last 27 years. And just to you know, be part of an establishment and church that, I mean, really helps the people. I mean, literally 32 trucks a day leave this property delivering food to the community. Uh, during the pandemic, they fed 5,000 people a day, three hot meals a day, the drive-through. 
and gave out diapers and all kinds of different things. They've got a floor for men coming off of drugs and alcohol. It's a one-year program. They've got a separate floor for women coming off of drugs and alcohol. It's another one-year program. It's all free of charge. Nothing, nothing to, uh, you know, there's no state funding, nothing like that. The, the women and men can also stay a second year and they can even stay a third year if they wanted to get into leadership. There's another building over there that houses just uh, uh, emancipated minors, people that are left out of the foster care system once they turn 18 and, you know, they wean out rather than ending, ending, up, ending up on the streets of LA and then five years or so with, with a drug addiction or pregnant, you know, they come here and they, they get to really immerse themselves. You know, if they didn't, if they didn't graduate high school, they were going to walk out here with a GED at the very minimum. And they're going to walk out here with some life skills. It's just amazing what, I mean, there's literally about 200 very, very active ministries that, that work out of this, this, this place over here. So when someone purchases one of these NFTs, does a part of that go towards uh, that charity or how, how does, how does that work? Yeah. So 10% goes to the charity in perpetuity. Um, so off of the first sale, secondary sales, all of it, 10%. Yeah. We're excited for that. We also, with what's going on in Ukraine, we decided to donate 10% to the Ukraine as well. Um, we want to help, uh, in any way we can. And we know that, you know, during, I mean, we're still creating the art and today's today and tomorrow's the final day. Um, and, uh, so that was one thing that we wanted to contribute to as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, outside of helping, um, both the dream center and Ukraine, Tommy is hoping to launch his, his own nonprofit with the funds of the NFT sale. So if you want to touch base on that, Tommy. Yeah, for quite a few years, um, I've been involved with some other nonprofit organizations. One's uh, called Shane's Inspiration. We work with disabled kids. We build parks for disabled kids, have an educational program that goes along with it. So I've been teaching kids in wheelchairs and with different disabilities how to paint with the tires of their chairs as well. Every year down at the aquarium in the Pacific during the Disability Awareness Month, uh, I, I teach kids for the, uh, two days in about six classes a day. And, and it's just remarkable. I mean, it's just so to have a place where they could come on a weekly basis and really create some art and have a continuous place to be. And, and just, you know, the motivation as well. You know, I've got quite a few friends in the, in the disabled community. I've been injured a little over 37 years. And I got really blessed, you know, I had a, a really a mentor. He didn't even know he's a mentor, a famous photographer named Christopher Volker. And uh, he went on to take his own life about six years ago. Wow, sorry to hear that, brother. Um, why don't you share a little bit more about the tokenomics? Do you guys have your own token being released with the NFT? Or is the NFT a token in of itself, if you can break that down for us? Yeah, so it'll just be the NFTs, um, but we do plan on uh, adding some pretty cool utility. So um, we're investors in a company called Keek, K-E-A-K.com. And so we're adding that utility to the NFTs. So if you own one of the NFTs, you can utilize Keek, you get lifetime access. Then we're also, um, we're building wearables uh, in the metaverse. So like Tommy has some awesome merch. So we're gonna sell, so you're, you'll get an exclusive merch um, both in real life and in the metaverse. Uh, so that's another utility. Um, and those are the, the three main ones that we have right now. Um, but the main thing is really just the art. The, the one thing that I, I, we forgot to mention is that you also can redeem the physical art piece, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then when you see them, I think you're going to love them. I think everyone will love them. They're pretty unique and really cool. So that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. So someone buys the, uh, the digital NFT, they also get the ability to redeem the physical art. Is that something that would get delivered to them through the mail? We're, we've actually talked through this extensively and we've been on clubhouses together. Um, and so the idea the general consensus was that people would like the opportunity to come meet Tommy. So if you own the NFT, um, he goes to art galleries all around the world. He's also in LA, which is a pretty accessible city. Uh, so the idea would be is if you own an NFT, you can fly to Los Angeles to meet Tommy. Um, and then redeem the NFT, of which at that point, Tommy would sign. So not only do you get a meet him, but you also get the signed digital art piece. I mean, physical art piece. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool because most NFTs, there's nothing physical about them whatsoever. So I noticed that's another element that separates this from a lot of the other you know, NFT uh, projects out there. I also love the fact you're giving back to Ukraine and you have all this, you know, this char charities that you're supporting. So doing good. It helps people feel good about 
purchasing the NFT to not only get access, you know, to the obvious, uh, you know, the NFT itself, but knowing that they're doing something uh, for humanity, you know, to help improve uh, life in this crazy world right now. Um, how about the dates? What are the release dates for when people can expect to actually take uh, take part of this? Um, so we have an auction March 10th. We're going to be auctioning um, some of the more rare pieces like Ringo's hands, handprint and, and other celebrity artists, musician handprints as well. Um, do you mind if I touch a little bit more about the crypto market? You said you got into crypto nine years ago, if I'm not mistaken, that's like 2013. So what was the price like Bitcoin and Ethereum back then? Okay, Ethereum did it. Um, Vitalik, had, uh, I don't even think Vitalik had proposed Ethereum. Oh, that's right. Actually, but um, Bitcoin, let's see. So I first bought Bitcoin, I believe it was sub $100 in 2012. Uh, in 2013, I, I think it was in the early, or sorry, the, the low hundreds. Um, yeah, so it was in the low hundreds. Um, so I used to have a few Bitcoin, but um, I only own one now. I don't own many at all. I sold all of mine roughly around 2014, 2015, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you yeah. think that, uh, what was the reason for, for selling them? Did you feel it kind of hit a peak at the time or uh, just curious your thoughts? Uh, no, I was just young, you know, I was really short sighted. Um, everything I did back then was short sighted. Um, now I'm very much long term, long term oriented. Um, I actually stake a lot. Um, I don't really I lock most of my crypto. I don't even have access to it if I wanted to, um, which is kind of the approach that I take now. But yeah, I was just, just really young and naive, unfortunately. I uh, totally understand. And what about, at least you got in that early. I mean, most of us didn't get involved in crypto till like more recently in the recent years. So for you to even know about it back then means you're pretty sharp. Now, um, where, where do you see the Bitcoin price going? Um, let's say by the time of the next halving, I think it's in 2024, right now we're in 2022. So over the course of the next two to three years, where can you see the Bitcoin price peaking? Like what's, where can you see that baby going? Um, I'd say it can potentially reach half of the value of gold. So roughly around 150,000 per Bitcoin. I, I can definitely see that happening in the next three years. So do you think that the Bitcoin market cap will eventually flip gold as well uh, over the course of the next cycle? Or do you think that could take a lot longer? I think that that'll take the next decade, but I have like unequivocally in my mind believe that it'll surpass the value of gold. Yeah, 100%, because gold, I mean, the only one so bullish on it still is Peter Schiff, right? <laughs> yeah, Maybe President right. Putin uh, and some of the people that control most of the gold supply. Um, how about yourself, Tommy? When did you get in? Obviously, you've been an artist your whole life, but when did you get into cryptocurrency? About a year, a year ago? About a year ago. And was it NFTs that was the draw, or what drew you into it? By way of NFTs. And I happened to be in the right place at the right time with the Board API Club. Oh, wow. Really <laughs> Super That's cool. Somewhere. So you're an early investor in the Board 8 Yacht Club? Yes, very early. Oh, congr yeah, congratulations. Eight. Yeah, he's Board 8 5, 8, 3, 8, I believe. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, That's okay. super. And where do you see NFTs going in the future? They say this is just the beginning. Everything is going to be digitized and become NFTs. Just curious your perspective from someone in it like right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be here forever. I mean, especially as an artist. I mean, I can't see, I would think all of my physical paintings would become an NFT just for the tracking purposes, you know, and for, you know, my estate down the road. Um, so that it'll forever be, you know, recognized and never be lost. That's, that's, that's the big thing for I, as an artist. So it's like a digital certificate of authenticity. It makes it real, right? Absolutely. Whereas I, I heard a story more recently, and Logan Paul talked about a while back, he purchased a box of Pokemon cards for like millions of dollars. And then he just recently found out because he actually went to open them and there were GI Joe cards in there. And he's like, if this would have been an NFT, I wouldn't have gotten ripped off. And I think that's a prime example of NFTs legitimizing a lot of the sh uh, shadiness in the industry with selling fake copies of stuff, you know? Right, yeah. So. Cool. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to share about the project that I didn't get to ask, uh, please do um, add it here and feel free to put a bow on it. I mean, I'm just excited. Thank you. 
I'm, I'm, I'm the last colors to go down on the boards today. You know, I've been, uh, I don't know, it's been a passion. It's just been, a, you know, a labor of love for the last five and a half weeks. I mean, it's just, you know, be able to work on a piece that big physical piece, you know, even just the, the one set of 100 boards, you know, 20 foot by 40 feet is beyond my wildest dream. So to have it be at a little 200, I mean, 20 feet by 400 feet, that's longer than a football field. So it's, you know, holy cow. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a big big piece, and it is all connected, one hundred percent. So you know, it's it's a, a lot of paint, a lot of mileage, a lot of time, a lot of heart and soul. Yeah, yeah, literally like thousands of hours, and everyone's like passion and like love, and we have lunch every day together, and we just like it's been like this for four months. You know, it's wild. You know, finishing because it's been exciting, and it's good to see it like you know finalized, and uh, just seeing all our work. Um, yeah. That's awesome. It sounds like a labor of love uh, project. And regarding that documentary, when is that uh, expected to release uh, in this year? Is it like, you know, midway through or much? I don't know how long it takes to work on those things. Yeah. So there's, I, I think we surpassed 2000 hours of filming. Yeah. So they're sifting through a lot. I'm hoping that we can have it done. I'd say maybe late April, early May. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it and I'm going to be sure to include all of your links to the project and everything they need to know in the show notes below the video in the description. I highly encourage all of my listeners watching this right now, you know, check them out, support the movement. I'll also include their social media and all that fun stuff. And once again, I appreciate you making the time to come out. I know it's very early there uh, in California. I'm in Puerto Rico. So once again, I'm like four hours ahead here in the future. But it's just a pleasure to connect with you uh, both. It's an honor, uh, Abraham and Tommy, and uh, look forward to reconnecting with you in the future after the project uh, is released. Thank you so much, JB. Take care, guys. My pleasure. Peace.